Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Wowza webinar. My name is Justin Miller. I'm the video and webinar producer here at Wowza. And today we are going to be talking about how to enrich your live streams with advanced analytics. Uh, so just so you uh, know what the agenda is first, uh, I'm going to introduce our speakers. We're going to take a little poll just to see how people are feeling about analytics. We'll talk about getting access to data analytics now in 2020 and some of the real problems with non-real-time analytics. That being said, we're going to talk about how you can build a proper foundation to get real-time analytics and the future of analytics and just a little sneak peek of our own data insights. Uh, after all of that, uh, we are going to do a demo, uh, giving you an idea of uh, what those uh, data insights are like, and we'll have a Q&A. Um, now, you can ask questions at any time. In fact, you should see that there is a Q&A area to ask questions. Uh, there's also a chat window. That chat window is available for all of you to chat back and forth with each other. But the Q&A window is the window you'll be using uh, in order to uh, send us questions. And again, those questions will be uh, brought up and discussed uh, at the end of this presentation. Uh, just to make sure everybody can uh, hear my voice and see my screen, uh, go ahead and in the Q&A window, just send a shout out, say hello, just to make sure it's all working. So hello, Crystal, how's it going? Hope things are going well. Noel from Boston, hey, how's it going? Okay, glad to see everything's working here. Um, now, uh, before I introduce our featured speakers here, I just wanted to take a quick poll to see how you guys are feeling. Um, so my poll questions are here. Number one, are you currently streaming live video? We always wanna know if you are or are not. Um, and two, do you currently use Wowza to do it? So if you could just answer these poll questions before we get started, I definitely appreciate it. Question number three, what industry are you in? And then question number four is multiple choice. Uh, we're trying to get a little more information on what types of real-time analytics are you interested in? So for example, real-time data for streaming health monitoring, real-time data for analytics, real-time data through, AP, through the API, real-time data through dashboards and other uh, visualizations. Doesn't look like it sent the whole question there for realizations. And the last one was real-time notifications based on thresholds for defined situations. So I'm just going to leave that up for another second. And while I am, I want to introduce Jamie Sherry. Jamie's here. He's the Wowza Media Systems Senior Product Manager. Jamie, how's Hello, it going? everyone. Good. Doing well. And we also have Jim Hall from Fastly. He is the Senior Sales Engineer there. Jim, great to have you here. Thanks very much for having me. All right, well, I'm going to end the poll right now, and uh, let's just, uh, I don't think we need to necessarily share those answers, so I'm going to close that up, and we're going to jump right into our first slide. So, Jamie, let's talk about data analytics for 2020. So, hello, everyone. Um, as you uh, may indicate or know by being in this webinar, um, uh, in 2020, um, data analytics have become pretty much mainstream, getting there closer to mainstream, if not already. It depends on the areas that uh, uh, we're talking about, but um, certainly data has become more and more important overall in, in decision making, uh, in business operations, and in strategy. Um, and uh, especially when we look at uh, proving out, uh, you know, a return on investment revenue, KPIs, um, these kinds of uh, inputs become more critical than ever. Um, you know, as we know, quality and availability are very high today with streaming video, all the services out there we see with 4K and, you know, uh, you know uh, live events and always on and, and so forth and, and, and over the top TV. Um, all examples of where, you know, you have higher quality, high availability with live streaming. Um, some of the difference there is you have this one chance to get it right in, in a sense you um, can do a live event and if you have issues, it can be quickly, uh, it can be challenging to recover quickly from issues. Um, and in some cases, your event could be over by the time you resolve those issues. So, you know, and if you have problems of so, a severe enough uh, situation, you may not uh, get a chance to do it again. Uh, you know, one notable example 
not to pick on Hulu, but they've been doing the live debates uh, over the years, uh, the, this year and last year, I should say. And uh, last fall, they had some some uh, challenges with one of them. Uh, they actually got a second chance, but that's a rare case. So um, yeah, the, a lot lot of opportunity and a lot of demand to to do it right. Um, and, and provide that high quality, kind of like what cable expe uh, expectations are today, right? TV, for the most part, just works, and, and uh, people have those expectations that it continue to just work. Um, what we're seeing, though, also with, with streaming is that um, there are tools out there that provide kind of additional intelligence layers, uh, the buzzwords AI, ML, uh, video quality analysis tools that do computational stuff around, around video quality, uh, like what Netflix does with their own standard and, and uh, and some of the other standards out that have been out there uh, for a while. Um, these are all uh, essential, becoming more essential pieces to kind of prove out quality and availability and make sure things are going well. So, um, again, as we look at analytics today, and in particular with streaming uh, and live streaming, you know, on the left I've got some examples of situations that exist today um, where you know essentially you have. A, inability to get at the data. It's kind of impossible. It's a black box, as we might note. Um, it's difficult otherwise, either through technical means um, um, or, or other methods to get at that data. And in a lot of cases, it's incomplete. Um, missing data points, data from specific workflow components. My example there would be that there's a lot of heavy focus today on CDN and player data. <clears throat> but I would argue that if you have a player uh, problem, playback doesn't work, that does not necessarily mean that the CDN or the player or the problem, the problem could, could definitely be um, what I call further upstream towards the source. And so that's what I refer to by incomplete. And sometimes the data, useless is maybe a harsh word, but data um, needs to be helpful in solving problems, right? And sometimes you have data that isn't um, helpful to, <clears throat> um, to, to fixing issues or to understand how, how well things went in a live stream. Um, so this data needs to be, um, you know, more helpful. It needs to be actionable, um, again, towards your business objectives. And a lot of folks, you know, again, if you measure ROI, look at KPIs, we're, we're you know, we're all using streaming to try to, um, you know, increase our audience and decrease cost to, as primary factors. We, um, you know, uh, streaming is a, either a key part or a uh, holistic part of a people's business, and it needs to work and, and it needs to not be, you know, uh, cost prohibitive uh, to use. And so um, these are kind of the objectives people look at as at the highest levels and, and, and why the data is important to them. So here at Wowza, we've been, we've been doing a lot of um, inspection on this. Um, you know, we have, uh, as you know, a server product and a service for live streaming. Um, we have a hardware and based encoder today. Uh, so we sit across the workflow in a lot of space, uh, uh, components of that workflow. Um, and really what people, again, are looking for is, you know, they're trying to ensure that their streams are working correctly or not. And, and, and good and bad is subjective. Um, if you look at various data points, um, you know, you're going to get different opinions across the, um, the, the customers that you ask. Um, but we all have this notion of, of wanting things to work correctly according to what we're trying to achieve. Um, when things aren't going well, though, we need to have the ability to troubleshoot and, and resolve issues quickly, right? So um, that ability to kind of go in where an issue lies, know where that issue lies, and go in and understand what the problem is and be able to resolve it quickly is very critical. As I said earlier, your event could be over by the time you resolve your issue or figure out where the problem lies. Uh, and, and again, just because you can't play content does not mean the player, for example, is the source of the issue um, necessarily. Um, as we're all looking at scale and, and quality and performance um, and, and reliability all come into play, you know, with that high quality and high performance, we often have large audiences. We often have the need to have the same experience to, to the widely distributed and large audiences. So, you know, we want to make sure that, that equally those things are, are possible for, for everyone that looks at our content. Um, and again, as I mentioned, AI and ML and VQA earlier, um, you know, looking at making sure uh, things are going well and when they're not can often um, be enhanced by uh, further intelligence and not just log data per se. Log data is very key, but we, um, we, we also want people to, to uh, know and understand and, and be able to leverage um, more, you know, more intelligence in the sense of automation and, and 
other pieces to optimize the viewer experience. Uh, and then greater interoperability and control, um, including third-party integrations, this all comes into play. Again, Wowza, as I mentioned, sits in, in pieces of the workflow. We don't sit across the entire workflow, um, but looking across the entire workflow uh, is super important. And, uh, you know, that means that the more kind of consistency or normalization you can have for data uh, access, whether you're using you know, all Waza products or you have a mix of Waza products and non-Waza products, for example, um, like we'll talk more about and show with Fastly, um, those are key pieces uh, to make sure that you have as much as possible there to provide the insights to tell you when things are going well and not going well. Um, so as we said earlier, ensure, you know, ensuring live streams are working correctly is really key. Um, the uh, example I would give is, is again with Fastly. Prior to working um, with Fastly, um, our, our Waza CDN component in Waza Streaming Cloud, and Waza CDN is a piece that you can use with Engine today as well. Um, we were getting data at a much uh, slower pace and rate for uh, both analytics and for monitoring purposes. Uh, versus Fastly where it's near real time and, and that's a huge impact. If your data is delayed um, and certainly longer than the length of your event, you're, you may even not, not even know you have a problem until it's too late. Um, so that's that's a real key to getting the data um, correctly and, and, and or quickly rather and, and helping to understand if things are working correctly or not. Uh, as we expand on uh, timely troubleshooting and resolution for issues, um, again, working with Fastly in this uh, light um, helps us uh, with understanding where there might be uh, issues in, in that are service impacting, whether they're for a single customer or for a broad set of customers. No, nothing's perfect, right? Um, we'll all admit that you know things can go down at any time. Uh, we work really hard not to have that happen, but um, when they do, what you want to do is be able to, to resolve these things quickly. Um, but understanding Part of that is understanding general consumption too, and, and you know regions definitely play a role here in, in understanding that. So, um, with scale and reliability, and again quality and performance, um, and uh, Jim, chime in here if you want to. to yeah, I, I, I was going to say. Um, yeah. So, um, so Fastly's real time log streaming is um, uh, somewhat different. Uh, than some of the other folks that uh, uh, who do provide real-time log streaming in that it covers all of our network. Um, it's not a segment of our network. Um, it's not just web traffic. It's everything. It's um, TLS, HTTP, video, web. It doesn't matter. It's all one network. It's not just uh, a, a subnet um, or traffic type. Um, we also deliver the data for every request, not just a sample of your data. We can do sampled data if you prefer, um, but most people want everything um, and they want it in real time, not you know minutes or hours later. Um, and the other is that you know our log streaming scales massively. Um, Taboola um, gave a talk um, at um, Fastly's reinvent, sorry, reinvent, <laughs> Fastly's altitude um, about how they're leveraging log streaming to deliver over a million lines per second. So this is real time, 100% um, of the network and it scales. Cool. And we're gonna we're gonna show as part of our demos the the power of that uh, later on in the webinar here. Thanks, Jim. As I said, um, intel intelligence, uh, greater intelligence and automation can help in optimizing the viewer experience um, and the success of your events and live streaming uh, and streaming as a whole. Um, you know, log files again, really key, uh, but data going mainstream means leveling up. And so, you know, again, audio visual quality analysis, computational analysis, uh, AI and ML looking across hardware and software and network and applications is really key. And I have these these four words up here, inspect, interpret, predict, and prevent. I, I like to to use these words to talk about not only what Wow's Insights will provide for customers, but you know what what really is I think key to uh, providing good uh, monitoring and analytics 
in a, a modern data world, which is, you know, not only just looking and giving visibility and observability for the data and giving, you know, that across the workflow, um, but being able to interpret things, right, as I said, being able to tell you as a customer where a problem lies and even perhaps what uh, you should do to resolve it is um, super helpful. Um, and, and time is money again, right? And so that helps shorten that time. Now predict uh, takes that even further. Um, you know, look at trend analysis and you could look at situations like say your bandwidth for your encoder coming into your origin or ingest infrastructure. And if you start to see fluctuations there or a decrease, or something else in a in what you know a user would consider a negative or sorry a customer would consider in a negative situation, perhaps you can prevent that the you know situation from being a catastrophic situation, um, and you know prevent again takes that that kind of predictability even further by suggesting that actions could be automated. You know imagine that you uh, define a uh, data point that hits a certain threshold and on that threshold you want an action to be taken to recover from a situation or to improve a situation um, that's all um, all possible today with um, you know with the right uh, pieces in place to to help further uh, mitigate downtime and um, you know even prevent uh, you know just a negative experience with users I touched on this earlier again, just to, to, to dive a little deeper, um, greater interoperability and control using third party, including third party integration. So again, as I said, Wowza sits across a, a, a majority of the workflow for live streaming, but not everything, right? We don't do, we don't do everything. Um, and at the same time, the flexibility to be able to put together a workflow that includes a mix of Wowza and non Wowza is super, super important. Um, and the, the ability with, great ease and, and feasibility to build and run those applications, um, get that reliability and quality and performance. Those are key pieces, right? But to look at the data around that to make sure that it's actually high quality, high performing, um, and highly reliable as such um, is, is, is super important. Um, again, as Jim said, Flat Fastly plays a key role in that kind of um, situation. Um, their uh, you know, log configuration, log data, um, the ability to um, tie the data flowing through the CDN back to the player consumption, back to the encoder, all the way through uh, the workflow is super important. Um, and, and that data can flow through um, all kinds of uh, QoE platforms and services today like, like Wowza's, um, but also uh, folks in the industry that are uh, doing similar things like Mux and uh, Nice People at Work with, uh, with their platform and um, uh, bit moving as well, and there's there's others just, uh, in the industry that are doing similar things. Um, key key is to be able to to tie that data together and give some intelligence to that and give meaning to that, so that you know. Um, again, in that sense of where it might look like a player problem, but it's really not a player problem that you can go you know kind of narrow down where that situation or issue really lies and, and resolve it. So. Demo time. All right, well, that being said, I am going to stop sharing my screen. And if you'll give me a moment, Jamie's going to get on and uh, show you a demo. So I'm going to give it a try. You know how <laughs> demos go. I, I do. All right, share my screen. Yay, OK, we can see my screen. OK, so I am logged into our Wild Streaming Cloud service. Um, we have a bunch of, of sample streams that are up and running all the time for various reasons. Um, and so just to show you what this content is, I'm going to let the player play this back real quick. So we've got a live feed out of our Berlin office. It's getting to be nighttime there, but we can still see some of the, the detail there, which is great. Um, so there's that stream, live stream. Now, this um, setup is running through um, a Clearcaster, a camera into in, in the office into a Wowza well, Clearcaster encoder, a hardware-based encoder we have, and it's then going into our origin and transcoding infrastructure in Wowza well, Streaming Cloud, and then it's going into um, Wowza well, Fastly as a CDN, and then out to Wowza well, Player in this case as I watch the content um, as a playback piece. Um, what I'm going to do here now, I'm the only one probably watching this at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do is introduce. 
a load test and an audience to join me in watching this great content. And now this data that's coming out of this workflow all the way across the workflow from encoder to the WAS streaming cloud origin and transcoders to WAS a, fa uh, to was a player and in the middle, I skipped over it fastly, that data is all flowing into uh, WAS Insights in our centralized storage collection and processing infrastructure for data in real, in real time. Um, what I'm gonna show you now is a dashboard that is a conceptual piece for what you could do with that data, what you could realize with that data. So um, we call this the real-time dashboard. And again, this is a demo proof of concept piece. Um, <clears throat> Let's check our load test here. We're still provisioning that. Probably should have started that a little sooner. Now that uh, test is adding those users, and then we can see now we're at 52 users. So uh, two pieces I'm going to show you. Um, this dashboard has a bunch of what I call uh, kind of pulse check quick items up top for stakeholders that want you know shiny quick answers on things. We have a viewer count, we have a stream score, which is actually not working for the moment. It should pop in there though. Um, we measure the latency across that workflow. That'll show up when that's available. That's, there we go, the score is up. Time to first frame for playback. We, we calculate that for all the players watching as well. Those numbers should start showing up here as I go. Um, down below, we've got our workflow and we've got, again, as I said, a clearcaster going into cloud and our origins where we have a single stream going in and three renditions created in an adaptive bitrate set going out through Fastly and then out to playback. Um, the uh, uh, green bars up here indicate that the status up here is green, just uh, to let you know. So now we've got a time to first frame number showing up. Um, various metrics showing up in here. Um, this dashboard shows you tabular data versus a little more uh, pretty data, uh, way to visualize the data. We've got a map down here, which is showing you the full path of that from source to playback um, all the way through. Um, I zoom in, I can you know, show you all the decisions, stuff like that. We got a preview over here. All this data is being updated every 90 seconds. These little trend lines show you how things are going. As I mentioned, trend analysis is important to kind of mitigate or prevent, uh, predict issues. Um, over here, we've got a bunch of data over here as well because it separates out by these different columns. Um, this graph here, however, and it's because I just started this, uh, that it's not showing the full last hour, but we'll show you the last hour again, speaking of trend analysis, you get kind of a better indication of how things are going with certain sets of these data points here. So, so this is again, what, what people could do with this, uh, with this data coming out of Waza Insights uh, as an idea. This uh, could end up in our products going forward too in the second half of the year. We Touch base with you, keep tabs with you on that kind of thing. Um, you know, this is a cloud specific workflow. We're also working on an engine specific workflow as well. So imagine if you're an engine customer that you could do this as well with your origins uh, for engine uh, and then go into Fastlane and go out, to, go out through a player that way too. So what I want to show you over here though, which is interesting, I should have showed you the before and after. Oh, I'm going to log in. Gotta love those timeouts. And that being said, if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the QA window. We'd also love to know what kind of analytics you'd like to be seeing. And if you want to enter that into the QA window as well, we'll definitely store that information. So what I can get is a, let me try it today. So I can get, a real, I can get more of a real-time set of, of our usage data in cloud for, as an example of the uh, speed and and uh, processing time for the data. I believe that we now get this data from the time we query it, or get it from Fastly to the time that it's in our infrastructure is down to two seconds. So I, I can you know, consider this essentially real time. If you go back, if we go back to the dashboard, we can see all these playback regions over here and the counts for the player. And I have you know, an instant mapping of that over here as well now. And this was all instantaneous, which is super helpful from a usage perspective. So um, 
So we've got the dashboard again that shows, you know, a visualization piece for customers who would prefer something like this. You have certain operations folks that might be a benefit from this. And this does look at a single stream. You could imagine a multi-stream view where you could drill down as well. Um, and and uh, certain stakeholders at higher levels might want, you know, the warm and fuzzy, like I said, at the quick pulse check at the top or, you know, the, the kind of, uh, you know, pretty visualization this creates. But very helpful in terms of information as well. Um, there's lots of good data in here at each component level to help. Um, this dashboard actually, I, I can't show it at the moment, but actually can invoke um, alerting too. We have actually a section up here at the top that could show you alerts for situations where you have to find predefined um, data points to hit certain thresholds and you wanna be notified when those happen. So imagine you could have an alerting notification concept in here as well. But again, in cloud, what you know, what what's realized today with our our integration with Fastly, which is GA today, it's it's been out for a month or two months almost, is um, this ability for your use of data to show up in real time. So, Jamie, let's put up the real time dashboard again, if we could. Sure. And I do have a couple questions coming in oh, okay, on sure. this and yeah. some other things, so I just thought we'd answer them right now. Yeah. Uh, one. Um, I have a question coming in about: Is there two costs for Wowza CDN and Fastly? Or is Fastly now the Wowza CDN? So Fastly, that's a good question. Uh, in full transparency, the Wowza CDN product, which works with Engine, is not yet production ready with Fastly. Um, it still uses our, our uh, current CDN offering. Um, that is a roadmap item for this first, uh, well, I, I believe it's the summertime frame. So um, I'm, I can, we can come back to you guys, anyone who wants to know definitively those timelines. Um, the uh, Fastly integration is in, in our cloud service, though, is, is a part of that service uh, natively, and it does have a cost component in cloud, but if you look at our cloud pricing, um, you have a delivery cost component with the cloud service regardless. So it's just it's part of that cost structure there. All right, great. And I'm also being asked, is this dashboard on Wowza Cloud, and I'm not sure if it's this dashboard we're looking at right now in this question or the previous one. Uh, is this dashboard on Wowza Streaming Cloud free to access or is it a chargeable service? We're using Wowza CDN for content delivery. So this is a proof of concept. This doesn't exist in any product today yet. Um, the intent, what we've been doing as, uh, and I can talk a bit ro of roadmap on Wowza Insights. So, we are working towards um, building out in the next quarter an API to this data, and that will include engine data and cloud data, so, uh, and Clearcaster data, in fact. So every Wowza product, will all the data will flow into Wowza Insights. You'll have a public API to get that data out and do something with it. This dashboard makes use of a private version of that API today <clears throat> that will again become public in, in, in the summer time frame. <clears throat> and, um, this dashboard could end up in our cloud service as a visualization piece. Um, it could end up in other Wowza products and offerings down the road. Um, we are um, working on more, as we work more on solution selling with, with customers, um, you know, imagine the ability to have an insights UI um, for people holistically for their workflow where you describe your workflow <clears throat> visually and then Wowza Insights uh, in the sense of a dashboard like this sits on top of that workflow, picks that up and just displays that workflow for you today. Like again, this is a fixed workflow up, up in the four boxes there that you can see. Um, but, but imagine you could define your own workflow with a mix of Wowza products and non Wowza products. And then the dashboard just kind of shows up and shows you everything for you. That's the vision that we see. Uh, but we're starting with an API and then we will work on, on visualization and user interface tools um, as, as we get past that API. Um, We've been doing a lot of discovery and collecting feedback from customers and others on what they want and when they, you know, what they want first and second. Um, that's why we're working on the API. It makes sense to build UIs on top of APIs. So um, we're working on APIs, as I said, in the second quarter. All of you, if you have feedback on what you would like in terms of visualization or the API or other pieces, we are envisioning a lot of other pieces. Um, one thing we um, had in the presentation um, that I didn't touch on tremendously is this notion of looking across the content life cycle. Live content has a, a life cycle to it, right? And that includes 
Um, the ability to look at your live event before you go live, during, while you're live, which is kind of like what we're seeing here, and after you're live. Imagine this tool turns into an, a post-engagement piece where you can go back and look through your live event and see where you can improve for the next time. Things like that are what I describe as the content life cycle, and those are kind of pieces that are coming, <clears throat> coming <clears throat> down the road too. And again, we'd love your feedback on what's important to you. What you know that helps us drive uh, forward on the pieces we want first to, to provide and second and so forth. All right, thank you. So so Alex and uh, Amiro, I hope that answers your question about getting data through the API. Uh, if you do have any suggestions, as Jenny mentioned, please go ahead also and type them into the Q and A window just so we can store them somewhere. Uh, that way, uh, Jamie also has access to look at those uh, suggestions later. Um, we have a question uh, from. Uh, Hardik, uh, as uh, does this as well support concurrent streams? So again, this dashboard being what it is, is looking at a single stream. Um, we envision with any user interface pieces that we do, uh, having a, a sort of multi-stream approach where you would have simultaneous events running and you want to have a heads up display or a dashboard of those with key metrics that you can look at it, and again, a kind of a quick pulse check kind of approach, kind of like the data at the top of this dashboard, and you can drill down into a single event, be, you know, you know, see, see things on that multi-stream view that help you understand whether it's going well or not. But then you can, you know, if you really need to drill in and say, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a question about this one event, and or I want to see what's going on, or there's a problem, you can drill down. So. And I can see some people really like these uh, dashboards right now. Um, Kumar is actually asking, can I create multiple tenant dashboards for each customer using uh, the WildStream Cloud portal? So again, the, the idea would be, uh, you know, again, this is a proof of concept. The, uh, the idea in, in, in future UI work would be, uh, it depends. If you're going to use cloud and kind of a white label customer to customer approach, uh, more of a B2B approach, which we do have a lot of customers doing, right? They take the API and they build their own UIs. You know, you can imagine building dashboards uh, for customers or, or letting them build one, uh, build them too, or even having them be available to their customers for their events. So th that kind of B2B approach would be possible, um, if I understand you right. The other concept that I didn't touch on yet, but I'll touch on now, is while we see people that want visualization, um, you know, to that point, they may want visualization in their own interfaces, their own management interfaces. So imagine you take the, the cloud API as an example, and you go build your own user interface for managing live events. And part of that you want is monitoring analytics. Um, you could imagine you could embed dashboards in there. So you could, you know, create dashboards and then have them show up in, in other tools down the road as, as um, you know, in, in the sense of broad analytics today, embedding dashboards is becoming a more popular thing where people don't, you know, there's this kind of middle ground, right? Where they don't want to build them themselves. They don't want you to do everything and be locked into your interface. They kind of want what you have, but in their own interface. And that's what we call embeddable dashboards. All right, thank you. Sounds like though, they, all of this is being pulled into the API so they could either build it themselves or maybe even contact their professional services to build something like this. Correct, I would say if you have opportunities where you want to look at this data and, and talk about visualization now for engine or cloud uh, in particular, um, our professional services group is, you know, while we're building out this API in this, in this second quarter, um, and we'll do more right behind that with, with all the other pieces I mentioned. We, uh, we have a professional services group. They are working with customers right now on Wowza Insights opportunities where they will leverage that API um, and we'll either get embeddable dashboards, visualizations, or they will go build them themselves. So love, uh, our team would love to, to talk to you further about such opportunities. Um, now, I think you've already stated this on the roadmap uh, that given a time frame when the these dashboards might be available in cloud so the availability of uh visualization is further out um i would call it at the earliest second half of this year you think that's going to happen before uh, these options for uh using was cdn with fastly are available as part of engine has the time right if it doesn't you know well with cloud it's okay with engine um, 
With Engine, there is a question of whether these things would show up in the user interface of Engine. I, I will be honest, that may or may not happen. Um, they may end up being, uh, you know, insights as a whole may become its own interface um, that people will access and still be able to use with Engine, just not through the Engine Manager user interface. Gotcha. Um, and But yeah, the tie-in for anything that leverages this will have to coordinate and, 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 and uh, and time with the well, the CDN for engine um, using Fastly, obviously. Uh, if, you, yeah. if you can't get the data in real time, there's no point in visualizing it. I'm not actually sure if they were talking about the dashboard for mm -hmm. engine or just specifically, you know, connecting uh, well, the CDN with Fastly, the API connections you were talking about. Oh, uh, well, I'm talking about a broad API for getting data out um, for real time monitor, uh, monitoring and analytics. The, the notion of integration of Fastly with Wazda CDN will have to come back to you on a time frame. I believe that the earliest it could be is the summer. But uh, again, getting it getting it in um, Wazda CDN for those engine customers versus what they have today is is uh, something I'll have to confirm. I'm being asked by one person, does this require the use of Wazda Player? It does not. So I have Wazda Player in here um, for the moment just because that was the quickest and easiest way to demonstrate a, a preview playback in here um, but uh, you know the intention down the road is that any any visualization like this would have um, the ability to use any third-party player um, we are working with third-party player vendors right now to integrate data back into our infrastructure um, so that you have the, you have that kind of fourth box on the right that isn't as a player and you get that client side data in real time all right, so as we can access more data, we have more ways of, of placing it. In yeah, in a third-party sense, regardless of where you talk in the workflow, the idea is to try to get as much data as possible. With Wowza products in that box, you'll get more today, um, but we realize that you're going to have a workflow most likely as a customer that is a mix of Wowza products. We don't provide everything anyway, and so we want to make sure that you're getting as much data as possible for the purpose of monitoring and analytics. So. Now, I have a few questions that came in that I'm not sure if they're related specifically to just questions on types of analytics they can get in or what they're sure. hoping for. I'm just going to go through these. Yeah, sure. Um, Noel says, how did you do that load testing? Is it something that's generally available within Wowza? So, it is not available today. Um, we did pilot this with a few of our ultra low latency customers uh, last year, uh, to, uh, which helped inform on some of the things we're going to do in Wowza Insights um, in, in this year calendar year. Um, so not available today, but intended to be available as part of some of the features we want to do in Waza Insights going forward, you know, consider it second half of the year at the earliest. The specifics I would say again is imagine the ability to test your event with a simulated audience before you go live and then get out a kind of report card to tell you how it went and you know, including suggestive areas for improvement. You had a you know, a, a bitrate codec mismatch, you know, mismatch or a bitrate keyframe interval mis, you know, mismatch, something, something related to the streaming, um, something related to a region that couldn't, you know, get out the content um, in, in an ideal way. Um, you'll, get, you'll get indicators for how to improve it um, out, of, out of running a, a, such a test. So yes, again, imagine the low test piece becoming part of um, our offerings going forward, but just not yet. All right. Another question is, could we use this to define why viewers are facing buffering issues in a particular region? Yes. The intent on the road is to, uh, is to provide as much context in the workflow, specific parts of the workflow as possible when there is something that you define as a customer is not going well. So again, I, I like to say that various data points that are measured in real time uh, from our analytics are subjective, right? You might say that, hey, this cash hit rate of 68% um, isn't good enough for me. I, I want to do something different, something better, right? Or it, it is good. Um, and, and that's not fastly, by the way. The reason that cash hit rate is where it is is just because of the nature of how I run this test. So um, uh, usually those numbers are up in the 99%. But um, the, uh, so, so the situation, the answer is yes. The intent is to, to, across the workflow, provide as much information as possible to tell you where we think something could be better, something is wrong, something is right, and again, as definable by you with all of this data, because again, it's subjective. 
All right. And um, by the way, I'm just rereading these questions here. So some of them I know are repeated okay. uh, parts. Uh, Alex was asking, can we have a finer detail of time segments? Uh, some of the events we stream are maybe only two hours long, and shorter segments would be useful to see viewer patterns. Love the RT dashboard. Can we have that anytime soon? Can we show caption info? So, a couple questions in there. Um, I'm not sure what is meant by shorter segments unless we're talking about the analytics I showed in cloud. Um, and feel so free to respond, Alex. Might, might Alex might want some clarity on what you mean by shorter segments. Um, again, all this data in here is is updated much quicker than in in the two hour window. Um, yeah, actually, he is asking if you could share the dashboard that we see today. Um, so going back to Wazzle Streaming Cloud. So all of this, when you use Fastly, is is real time as as the data is coming in. Yeah. So and again. Go ahead. Once the API is done, so we have a place to start. So he wants to know what dashboard, how the dashboard might change. I think once the API uh, works with Fastly to have more real time. So when we have the API, to be honest, what we will have is people go and build and grab the data and build their own dashboards and their own tools. First, when we have the ability to put a dashboard like this in our cloud product or into an insights user interface, it'll be customizable. You will be able to, like I said, you'll be able to define workflow, define um, elements within, you know, within reason, right? We can't, you know, we're not going to be able to build a, you know, have a complete builder that lets you do a million things, but, you know, we'll, we'll reflect on the things that went, you know, that resonate well in here with customers and, and if they have suggestions on other pieces they want to see and know, um, make those available as well. Um, the key is about the data and, and the API will, again, um, further people uh, initiatives that want the data but want to do the visualization themselves. That's the first part. And, it's, and, and, and again, we realize visualizations are, for, are, are certainly helpful for people that don't want to build them themselves and, and those pieces will come later with the ability to customize it at some levels. So Alex, uh, I hope that helps. I'm not sure when you're talking about having a place to start, are you trying to figure out what API data is gonna be available to you? And are you asking that in relation to what cloud data that you currently can see? Uh, I think he's related to the health monitoring perhaps. Um, if you wanna give us some more details, certainly uh, we'll be happy to help answer your questions here. I'm just gonna jump to some other questions. I was asked by a couple people, uh, I, this, doesn't really relate to our analytics per se, but I guess they're asking if uh, Fastly is going to help us with DBR capabilities or VOD streaming or any of that mm -hmm. with uh, cloud. Certainly, there is there's a roadmap now that we have Fastly in place, and I'm not working on it anymore. I used to work on it, but I envisioned the roadmap this way before, and I think it's still the case. Um, it's it, we'll have to get back to you on any timing, but there the the integration of Fastly has opened the door for a lot of new enhancements and new features, um, one of which is DVR. So we envision DVR showing up in cloud at some point. Um, timing, again, is, is it's kind of TBD. I'd have to get back to the product manager um, who's running with cloud now and have them respond on, on such things. But DVR, um, the way we do our architecture with, with Fastly now, in, um, creates a whole uh, additional set of live to VOD capabilities and really content manipulation capabilities in terms of things like clip, clip extraction um, and um, you know manipulating content that could be targeted at specific users for specific reasons. Um, there's all kinds of, of scenarios that open the, where the doors open with the, the um, new architecture and workflow of Fastly. Awesome, glad to hear it. So it's it's more possible than it was before. Definitely something on the horizon, but yeah, no, no don't dates. The, can we say don't have the dates. Moment. Don't have the dates. <laughs> the, we, we have to consult the product manager uh, for cloud, uh, Robert, to to get those answers. And uh, just to respond, Alex was the one who was asking relating to uh, the what we currently can see uh, within uh, Wild Streaming Cloud. He says he just has. Uh, what I see here would be a huge start for small companies with limited development. Yes. Yep. We recognize visualization is, it definitely has an audience. And so, um, you know, imagine places like this tab in cloud under the, the transcoder um, with the health tab having additional information here, more like what you see with the uh, real-time dashboard. 
And by the way, the person previously was saying we are so waiting for Wazo VOD the cloud, so just, you know, they're excited. It's yeah. coming. <laughs> yeah, it's again Robert, uh, the cloud product manager working on it, so it's coming. Um, uh, a few last questions here, and I, I'm not really sure if this one even relates to anything we're doing, but I'm gonna go to these here. So, uh, uh, Harkin uh, was asking, uh, does this dashboard also help troubleshoot issues? I mean, from where the issue is, let's say, from source or engine or with cloud or maybe with the player side? I mean, the idea is to present in this dashboard, it primarily present, let me see if I can tr trigger an alert here. Um, we have this little sneaky little thing down here that can introduce errors into the test, load test. Um, oops. The, The dashboard's design today is to provide information that's configured and measured. So there's a mix of things here that are configured and measured. For example, in the encoder, this information over here, the frame size and the frame rate is configured. Um, uh, but what's measured is, you know, um, well, a lot of this is configured, right? And then what you see are some measured pieces across the board here in different places. Um, but you see a mix of configured and measured is, is, is really the overarching message there. And the, um, the idea here is that by looking at this data, you know you'll have some insight as to yourself and your head mentally that you know what's right and what's wrong, right? If you see something crop up that doesn't fit a, a measured value you would expect, or a, you, know, you look in here and you say, wait a minute, I thought I configured that frame size to be 1920 by 1080. Doesn't say that I need to go back and check something. So it's really more of a kind of a visual check and and, and, and verification that way. Now, um, again, what we see over time is the ability to kind of inform on things with a kind of a rules engine approach with with that ties in alerting and thresholds where you say, okay, you know, a rule could be like if this combination of these two data points is this far off or you know this mismatched. Or something of that nature, you could you could create these kind of situations where you could be more intelligently notified. Um, you know, if you, for example, if you saw a region in here you were trying to block based on a geo rule, and somehow that got through, the map might be a great way to tell you, hey, why are people watching in Hong Kong? I I clearly set up a, a, a geo rule with with Wowza and Fastly to say no one's allowed to watch in Hong Kong. Uh, and, and you know, then you could be warned on that and, and you could even have actions taken, right? You could decide, hey, if somebody slips through the cracks, shut them off. If somebody slips through the cracks, uh, let's, you know, go check and make sure that because we all know about IP addresses and geo resolution has its, its potential to be error prone, right? That you could, um, you know, actually have a and approved, yeah, they're okay because you know they are really this, and I know that, and that's okay, kind of thing, right? But it could all be automated or, you know, or rules based. So again, the dashboard just shows you information that you kind of meant to interpret and decide for yourself. Um, it does not look like my rules are going to um, cause an alert to show up here. Um, usually, messing with the rebuffer and failure rates makes these numbers over here go up. But that's how demos go. Sometimes they don't work. Um, so again, long long answer, but that's how that's how this dashboard works today. And we got about two more questions left before we go. I just want to say to to Jim, Jim, thanks for joining us. I feel like you haven't sure, had to no. say much. I, oh my, uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say one one of the um, one a great monitoring and alerting model for live streaming is um, depending on your workflow, uh, three hundred four monitoring. If you suddenly see a spike in 304s, uh, it means that the manifest uh, isn't updating, and it means something might be going wrong between the encoder and the packager. Yep, all right, that's a great tip. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Anything else, Jim, you wanna throw out there? Um, uh, no, I think um, just that, you know, the one of the awesome things about, um, the integration with Fastly is that um, how flexible it is um, and the data points that you can add, um, custom values, et cetera, et cetera. So you can really make this work for you um, uh, as opposed to just um, a, a fixed set of data points that you just have to work with. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah, we, we are super happy with the FASTA relationship. We, you know, with the implementations did not take very long. Um, of course, we have a, a good smart team who was eager to work through all that. Um, but, you know, really happy with what we're doing with Fastly. Our, our, our real goal now is to get that traffic growing and, and moving. So awesome. a lot of benefits. And definitely a lot of people are hoping for that VOD coming up. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Robert, um, Robert knows the timelines. Yep. The last two questions I have, I think, are more feature requests, so I'll just sure. mention them. Um, Mark was saying, will be a standard function to export the analytics to so give a customer to archive for later. Yeah, so one of the other features we envision is what we call a, a data a raw data export. So imagine you set a time window, um, or you define it by a, the name of the event or stream, um, and, and then you instantly have the ability to download all the data that we uh, provide on that event. And, and send that off. So, and uh, Crystal saying uh, a blocker for us is not having a way to restrict the privacy of our streams to a domain. Is that a feature in the works in the future? So that's a, a cloud or an engine specific thing. Um, I I would have to defer to our, our product managers on those products. Um, I mean, I know you can craft stuff with engine um, with cloud. I forget if that feature is in cloud. I don't believe it is today. So right. uh, best to confirm with, with the respective product managers. All right, fair enough. And Crystal, you may just want to contact our support for help for things like this. It's yeah, they'll know right away. Yeah. Um, last question uh, from Noelle. She said, we lost some health info with recent changes. I'm thinking of GPU percentage. Uh, will that be returning? So I don't know where that would, I probably need more info to know if that's a Yeah, we need a little more info. Cloud or an engine thing. Yeah, uh, uh, but again, and, definitely and where, contact where your support department, yeah. I think. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. You know, we, to get, you know, to understand and to be able to troubleshoot things isn't really what this webinar is for. So definitely appreciate you asking, but certainly our support will be able to directly figure that stuff out much more quickly than we could right here. Um, Noel was saying it's, it's, it's cloud, but you know, again, uh, our, our cloud support team definitely can help you out with that. Yep. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for joining us again, Jim. Glad to have you here. Um, sorry we didn't get a chance to chat more with you. That's okay. Uh, Thanks very much, Jim. All right. And uh, Jamie, thank you for coming as well. Thanks, uh, definitely a great demo. I do. I love this uh, real-time dashboard. I'm sure many people are excited to see something like this put into effect. Uh, if you want to see it faster, uh, just you know, email back uh, to us at webinars at wowza.com and, and let us know what you're interested in seeing. Uh, we definitely uh, want to be able to give people what they want. All right, take care, everyone, and have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Jim.